The women had been trafficked from the blighted cities of a blighted nation on the coast of a fallen continent. This particular group had been smuggled from the shanty towns of Glasgow, Birmingham and Cardiff. Crammed into the gloomy hold of a transportation drone, they were delivered like consumer perishables to the rusted hulk of a century-old oil rig. Here, in grimy hospital wards, they were surgically augmented, given gills, given tails, wired up and chipped, tattooed with barcodes to show who now owned them, sent to work harvesting the cultivated kelp deep beneath the swell. Martina was 15. Her grandmother, who had sold her to buy food for her siblings, had shown her some footage of ancient animation and told her that she would become a little mermaid. Now her legs were encased in a silvery mesh which was slowly weaving its way into her skin. Her piston-driven trail swished as she plucked at the fronds of kelp that swayed like ghostly green dancers. Once her cousin had jacked an eye cube from a tourist. She remembered watching a documentary about kelp har harvesting in the South China Sea. Giant subaquatic machines rolling across vast leagues of kelp sewn in ordered columns on perfectly flattened seabed. It wasn't like that here. The kelp grew wantonly across rough and rocky terrain. The Brazilian crime cartel who ran the operation preferred forced human labour. Their margins were too tight to invest in maintaining automated high harvesting equipment. Martina sealed another gigantic bag of kelp and placed it in the deep wire basket, waiting to be hauled up back to the rig. She wondered if any of it would make its way back to Mary Hill. She imagined a barnacled tug duck boat docking on the Clyde to be unloaded by the spidery robotic arms of some improvised crane, knocked together from scrap metal and discarded circuitry. She wondered if any of it would touch the lips of her brothers and sisters. She wondered how long it might plug the empty ache in their swollen bellies. Do you think the boat will come? asked one of her fe fellow harvesters, speaking through her communication snorkel. But Martina felt her surgically slashed gills close and open, filtering oxygen as the voice crackled in her ear. Boat? she asked. What boat? The boat, came the reply. The one that is financed by wealthy Indians the friends of the West, the one that leaves each month from Cape Town. I don't know what you're talking about, said Martina. The boat, said the girl, sounding frustrated. They rescue people like us, reverse the augmentation, give us back our legs, let us start afresh in the South. The South, thought Marina, Martina, stuffing more kelp into a fresh bag. There's the dream. These days, geography is well and truly fucked, her grandma used to curse. When I was a girl, everyone wanted to come to the West. Now it's all up upside down and higgledy fucking piggledy. I don't believe there's a boat, said Martina. No one's coming for us. Shows how much you know, said the girl, and swam off in a half to another section of the field. Up above, the waves were getting choppy as the storm rolled in. Martina felt herself buffeted and tossed by sudden bursts of undercurrent. Call it a day, came the order from the overseer. The basket, laden with its cargo of kelp, began slowly to ascend upwards as down came dozens of gantries. Martina found her designated spot and rested her armpits on the carved supports shaped to a perfect fit. There came a yank of the hydraulics, sending up a tumbling fume of bubbles. A tight belt clamped itself around her chest to hold her in place. The other women were similarly secured, row upon row. The gantries rose. Martina gasped as she was pulled up into the cold air of a dreary and blustery sunset. Grey waves climbed and dipped, making great white snakes of spume around the legs of the rig. When the women were still submerged from the waist down, the gantries fell still. Here they would re remain till dawn, trails, tails swishing in lethargy. Martina looked up. She could see the erratic bursts of movement on the oil rig. Over the howl of the wind, she caught snatches of boisterous banter of the crew 
as they set about getting drunk on the proceeds of their ill-gotten gains. The rain lashed down as the wave fizzed and foamed and filled her mouth with the taste of brown. brine. The women began to moan, a discordant, inharmonious cacophony. Martina re realised that they were calling, trying to summon a myth that they clung to, that elusive boat prowling in the darkness, a siren's call to draw it near, hoping in defiance of their hopelessness to be saved and restored. Martina closed her eyes and thought of the warm sun that rose over the affluent south. After a while, she joined the lamenting of the mermaids.